Welcome to the third step where we're going to build the dashboard. In the previous step, we worked with data, we gathered it, we cleaned it up and manipulated it so it was in the right format and we had the right columns so we can start building our dashboard. In this third step, we're gonna create the charts, the tables, we're gonna sort the data, we're gonna filter it, and we're gonna put everything together to build this dashboard. And just as a reference, here's the mock-up that we have originally got pre-approved by the key stakeholders. So we're going to try to recreate this using Google Sheets. So let's get started. Let's start building our dashboard. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna push all these rows down so I can build the dashboard on the upper part. So I'm gonna insert rows above. I wanna have this table down here and this is the area where I'm going to create the dashboard. So let's start with the first part, which is I want to analyze the price and I wanna create a histogram. So I'm gonna select that column of price and I am going to insert a chart and I'm gonna format it as a histogram, as I see here. I'm gonna do a few modifications. One is I wanna make the bucket size of $250,000. And we are going to drag this and put it in this corner up here. So I'm doing my best guess of sort of fitting it into the right size here. And we are going to format and customize this later. The second thing I wanna do is I want to add a scorecard that contains the median price. So for that, we're gonna insert another chart and we are going to make this into a scorecard that appears here. We're gonna make it smaller. We're gonna put it in this area over here. Again, we're gonna customize this later. And we wanna make sure that this is aggregated, but we want this to be the median price. Now, the reason we're selecting the median price will depend on the type of analysis you're doing. But for the time being, I'm just gonna do a quick analysis where I'm gonna present the average and the median of our prices. So for the average, we're going to select the average of this whole column, and then we have also the median of that whole column. So what happens is we can see that our median is 700,000 compared to 900, almost a million dollars in the average. Now let's say that, for example, we have a property that has a very high price, like 10 to the power 10. So that property affects the average from almost a million dollars to $10 million, while the median stays the same. Remember that the median is the price point where half the properties are below 700,000 and half the properties are above 700,000. But the average gets affected significantly by those outliers. So we really need to have a lot more properties at this price range to start seeing the median slightly shift while the average shifts significantly. So in this application, we're more interested in the median than the average, but that does not apply for all applications that we work with. So we're going to undo and go back to our original state that we had before. For the next chart, we wanna see how the sales price changes throughout the years. So here we have one column that is the year of sale, and we also have the price that we're gonna select here. So let's insert another chart and we're gonna make this into a line chart. Now we're gonna to have to modify this quite a bit. So first I want the year sold here on the X axis and I want this aggregated by year. We don't need this sold year in this section here. And the price, we don't want the sum, but we also want the median as we had before. So let's move this chart to its right location. So we're gonna put it around here. Let's make it a little bit smaller on this direction and a little bit smaller on this direction. Now let's look at what we have. So we have the year 2021, 22, and 23, and we have this line that sort of goes down a little bit and then goes up. Now let's see what happens. Here at the bottom we have filters. And I'm gonna filter this by different states. So the first state I'm gonna select is California, and let's see what happens. This seems to indicate it's going down, but if we look carefully, we notice that we have now 2022 first, then 21, and then 23. And that is not what we want. We want this in order from 21 to 23. So the way we can fix for this 
is we can go to the sold year and we can sort it from smallest to largest. And now we can see it's 21, 22, and 23. And doesn't matter which state we select, it's always going to be in that order, which is what we're interested. So we can definitely look at the trends going up or going down year after year. So we're going to unfilter this. The next chart we want to add is we want to compare the square footage and the price. So let's select those two columns and add a chart. And we want them as a scatter plot as we see here. We want the square footage on the X axis and the price on the Y axis. We want to add a trend line. And the way we can do that is we can go to the series and we say trend line and this adds this line. This is basically a straight line that best fits our data. And down here we can add a label with the equation. So this equation is Y equal MX plus B. X is the square footage. M becomes the price per square footage. And this is the intercept B that we see here. So let's try to understand what this equation is saying. This model is saying that if we have a property with zero square footage, we can sell that property for $152,000. Obviously that does not make a lot of sense, but it's a first step of a model. Also, it says that for all properties in general, the price per square footage is $479. This is a very basic model and linear regression is a little bit more complicated because usually you don't just use one feature like square footage, but you use more information like including the number of bathrooms, the zip code, the school districts, etc. And all that information helps you really create a good model. But we're going to use this as a starting point for this analysis. The next chart that we're going to build is we're going to analyze how many of our properties are old or new. And we have created this helper column here that has the label new if the property was created on the year 2000 or higher. Otherwise, it's labeled old. So for that, let's include a chart. We're going to use specifically a donut chart that we see here. Now let's put this chart in its right spot. So we're going to move it down here. And let's make this a little bit smaller on this side as well. Okay, now let's analyze a few things. When we look at old properties, we see new is in blue and it's the smallest slice. Now let's select, for example, just California. California does something different. Old becomes the color blue and it's the biggest slice. Similar to what we had before with the years, we're having the same issue with this new column. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort this column from smallest to largest. And basically it doesn't matter which state we select, we're always going to see now that in blue, it's going to be the new one. And for this data set, it's going to be always the smallest slice. So let's bring this all together. Now that we have created our dashboard, we can see that at the bottom, we can filter things out. So for example, I can filter it by the sold year to only 2021 and 2022. And then it just displays those values and all the charts get updated. Now, one of the requirements was to have a filter based on states. So we can utilize the filter here or alternatively, we can see we have a filter on all the headers. We can go into data and add a slicer and we can add one or more slicers and we can select any of those columns that we have there. So in this case, we're going to use state clean and we're going to put this slicer all the way up here. So we're going to move it here. Notice that we no longer have the filters on the column headers here because we're going to use the slicer. And with the slicer, we can select California and now it filters the data for us or any other states. So for this dashboard, we're only going to use that one filter, but you can create more filters if you feel the need utilizing the slicer functionality. Here, we're presenting the mock-up that we have received approval from the key stakeholders. And here we can observe the dashboard that we have created so far. All the charts, the tables, the filters, and the functionality has been created, but clearly these two dashboards do not look the same. 
In the next section, we're going to focus on how to format the dashboard to make it look much prettier, elegant, and in line with the brand guidelines of the real estate company we're working with.